Welcome to Community Voices with Carlissa Thorne. And we are here today with Victoria Cook. And today we're going to be talking a lot about guilt. How to be living a life that is guilt free. And she knows all about being guilt free. So why don't you share with us the name of your company, Victoria, and what you do to tell people how to live a guilt free in the business world. Thanks for having me, Carly. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, I do know quite a bit of uh, about guilt. I am the uh, director for the Center for Guilt-Free Success, and I'm passionate about helping women business owners uh, not just thrive in what they're doing in business and attract great clients that are going to pay, stay, and refer, but also how to do that in a way that allows them to balance what's important uh, at home as well as their, their business goals. Now, the other thing I'd like to touch upon because you and I have talked several times now, is I want people to understand how you can talk about living a guilt-free life now. So I'd like for you to actually share basically who you are and how you can actually talk about that. Meaning, you know, are you married? Are you a mom? Do you have kids? Because we're going to be talking about very facets of a guilt-free life. So share a little bit about how you've gone from, from where you are. In other words, from a business life or from a home life. Or so, you know, sure, so, so now, as, as we go along in our interview, how you can actually talk about living guilt from your life. Absolutely. You know, I definitely feel like I have walked in my client's shoes. I am, I am married, and I'm the mom of an eight-year-old, and for about eight years, my husband and I also raised our nephews. So at one point, we'd been married for 10 years with no children, and then we went to an instant family with my nephew and then about 17 months later just to make things interesting we added a child of our own so at one point I had a teenager and a toddler and that really makes uh, things very interesting um, I love what I do and I always felt like I would want to you know continue working in my business even after I had my son and I did absolutely but I loved motherhood so much more than I ever imagined that I would and so there were times when I felt that pull of gosh I wish I were you know when I'm at home I'm thinking about what's going on in my inbox and when I'm in my office I'm, I'm wishing that I was with you know with my son and my nephew at the time and so I felt those pangs of guilt and and I realized that you know, great success was not enough if I was feeling overwhelmed and stressed and guilty in the process. So I needed to find a way to strike a good balance. And I used a lot of the, the tips and techniques and strategies that I'd used with clients and I really found that they did work for me. You know, I, I, we, can, we can't have everything all at once, but I think we can have exactly what it is that we want if we're willing to make some choices and be really clear about what that looks like for us. So that's what I like to do throughout this interview. I like to provide people with tips and tools, and I like to emphasize exactly what you said, is that life is all about choices. Mm. And I think in society in general, we live a society that all of life has been made about choices and actually a life of guilt. We're made to feel guilty in our choices. Would you not say that is the case? Well, you know, I was asked in an interview for a newspaper a couple years ago if I thought guilt was an emotion. And my knee-jerk reaction was to say yes, but honestly, no. I believe that guilt is something that we allow in our own lives. It's, it's kind of a, a habitual uh, way of thinking that we've allowed to creep into our lives. So I really do believe that we can make, we can make choices to be guilt-free. And I think it's probably one of the most important choices we can make for ourselves as women and business owners and mothers and daughters and community members and um, it, it does take some, some tough choices, but it really can be done. So I don't think it's something always that people put on us as much as um, things that we're just not, we're not making the choices or we're not being clear about what it is that we want. And so then we're kind of thrown into uh, the winds of, of what other people want for us or other people's expectations. Um, I've, I've found kind of three key sources of guilt in, um, from my own you know, work in my life as well as working with clients. What, are, what were those three sources that you found working with clients? Would you, you know, go through those three sources, please? Sure, sure. So um, the three key areas, the first one is the should or shouldn't dilemma. And this is um, one where women feel like, gosh, I should do this, I shouldn't do that. And it really stems from 
trying to live up to the expectations of others, whether that is societal norms, cultural beliefs, or well-meaning friends and family. And really at the root of this issue is we as women and business owners not being really clear about what it is we want for our lives and for our businesses. I was working with a particular client who was a very sharp executive woman for a not-for-profit not organization and mom of a couple beautiful boys and you know she was feeling some shoulds around um, what what her mom thought she should do um, for her son's birthday party and it was counterintuitive to what she wanted to do and what she thought her son would enjoy and so she was really struggling with this and feeling guilty about you know some of the choices she was going to make and then she had to really reconcile that this is this is what I want this is what's I think going to be best for for me and my family and you know I'd love my mother to come to the party and enjoy things and um, and if she doesn't want to come, then you know that's certainly her choice. The irony is when she made her decision, she really realized what she wanted. She let go of the guilt and the shoulds of what you know her mom thought she should be doing. Um, ended up having this wonderful party. She included her her uh, neighborhood community, some of her new friends, and it was a great party. And her mom stayed and had a wonderful time. So had she you know gone with what her mom had wanted, it wouldn't have been this great outcome. And so she really just had to let that go and see this is really what I want and this is why I feel it's important for me and my family or my business. And that's something you brought up that is one of my pet peeves actually. <laughs> the should have, could have, would have. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us live in those should have, could have, would have. And I think when we start, and I think a lot of us need to start paying attention to the words that we use in our language. And I think the more that we do that, the more, and I think a lot of those words that we don't pay attention to are actually a lot of the sources of our guilt in our life and that ties into again the choices I think the more we tie into realizing the choices that we make that also ties into the words that we use in our life it's very easy to get wrapped up into our languaging and I think that is a source of power that, that again ties into our choices that we make I think we forget how much power we actually do have in our lives and I think that it, that is again ties into everything that we're talking about here today guilt choices I think that we have the ability to really empower others too in this discussion oh, absolutely. How much we can do for ourselves and and I think in our families as, yeah. as as mothers and teachers and I mean I think as a woman we have such roles we have to play we're partners, we're mothers, we're, we're such diversified beings. And I'd love for you to touch upon that because you've actually doing that. You're, you're married, you're a partner to your husband, you're a mom to your children, and you're choosing to be a mom entrepreneur, if you will. So I'd love for you to share a little bit to other people out there, how is it that you do it all? I mean, because that's a very big question. How do we do it all, and, and how are we still happy, and how are we not, not feeling guilty? So I'd love for you to share some tips and tools with people out there. How is it that you do do it all and, and are happy with yourself? Yeah, and honestly, I think that's a great segue into one of the, um, the second areas of guilt that I think creeps into a lot of women's lives. And it's um, the three big O's of overwhelmed, overworked, and overcommitted. And that stems from not using boundaries and not saying no. And I really believe that is a, one of the challenges that women really face. You know, we're the caretakers. We, we want to be helpful. We don't want to be seen as not being a team player. And we want to, you know, genuinely help and, and serve others. I think that's part of our inbred nature. And yet, that doesn't mean we have to say yes to everything. And so, to your point, you know, one of the ways that I'm able to reconcile all these different roles is to set some boundaries and to say no when warranted. You know, we don't have to say no to everything, but really look at what it is we're saying yes to and does it align with our goals? Does it align with our natural gifts and abilities? Uh, does it align with, you know, where we're going with our business and what's going on with our families? And um, I know that that can be a real challenge for women saying no. And it doesn't have to be a dirty or nasty word. <laughs> the um, the other uh, third area of guilt is what I call the type A trap. I, I work with a lot of uh, very successful women entrepreneurs and business owners, and it's interesting because I have found over the years 
though I don't specifically market to this, I tend to attract a lot of firstborn girls. I'm a firstborn girl myself. I think firstborn girls, if we're being sort of stereotypical, and not everyone is this way, obviously, but we're you know very much natural born leaders. We're uh, take charge, uh, you know, often very successful, and we have a really high standard for ourselves. And so sometimes that standard can also get in the way and how we perceive ourselves and the amount of guilt that that can create in our lives. And so it's not that we shouldn't have a high standard because that's okay to have a standard, but we have to make sure that it's in alignment with where we're at in this season of our life or that it's something that's really achievable for us. You know, sometimes we've got the standard that's all the way up here and it's not even reachable. Or maybe it was reachable at one point, but our lives have changed. You've added a child, you know, maybe you're climbing the corporate ladder. And so some of the standards you held for yourself now need to be amended to fit that current lifestyle. And so those are some of the things that I've done for myself and I work with my clients on to help them make those choices, reconcile what's important to them personally, as well as achieve those business goals. Now, I want to realize something that I'm sure you're aware of. However, it's interesting that you said that. You said you tend to attract people that are A personalities because you're an A personality. And I think it's, for, it's something I'm only bringing up because I'd like for other people to be aware of. Realize that we attract people that we tend to be like. And, it, it, you know, you realize that everybody out there, we're drawn to different, different types of people. And I love, and that's one thing I love about being entrepreneurs or just being us, being our unique selves, is that there's tons of clients out there, and I think there's a client out there for everybody. And we're drawn to people. The reason why we can help people is because we've been there, right? And we yeah. have a certain type of personality. So obviously yeah. you are going to draw people that are type A personalities because you are a type A personality. Yeah, and I, I, I say I've, I've learned to be a type A minus. <laughs> right. In other words, and, and therefore you can help them because you are there and you've been there. So actually, I would, I would actually celebrate that. In other words, because, you know, you, in other words, you wouldn't go to a priest who has never been married and who's never had children. You're going to go to someone who's been through what you've been through, therefore you can help them. Yes. And I think a lot of people discount that. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people why why I find a lot of people want to shove their past under the carpet or shove their bad experiences under the carpet. I'm like, why would you want to do that? I am thankful for my past. I am thankful for my whatever you want to call them, my journeys or my yeah. mishaps, if you will, because those mishaps in my journey has made me who I am today. And those experiences, by the way, help me help my clients. Whether they're good or bad experiences, first of all, they're not good or bad. They are what they are. However, right. those experiences are tools for me to help my clients. Yeah, I believe you know, we all go through what we go through for a, very, you know, for a very good reason, whether it's lessons for ourselves or things that we can take and use for others. And that's why I love what you were saying about you know, like attracts like, for sure. When I work with my clients on their you know, marketing of their business and they're not sure who their ideal client is, one of the things I tell them is look in the mirror. Chances are your clients are going to be like you and they're going to like you, whether it's they like your snarky sense of humor or you know, they like the way you look or what you stand for or you know you have some sort of similar background you're both moms or you're you know both grew up on the south side of the city so um, yeah I totally totally agree with you in that regard yeah so I, I always try and tell people don't be embarrassed you know and, and also don't be afraid to share because you never know when you're sharing that you might touch a heartstring in somebody else you might touch something in them that then brings this bond or this commonality that then creates a just a storytelling and an outreach where then they are going to want to be your client. Mm -hmm. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've actually gotten clients because of a, just a rapport or a storytelling rapport that they're like, wow, I really want to work with this person because they get me. And it may be yeah. something they wouldn't have ordinarily shared with you, but because you started just sharing a little tidbit of something they're like, wow, this person gets me. This is the type of person I can talk to. And I think that's an important piece of being authentic, being authentically you. And, and that's, you know, also I think part of being guilt-free is acknowledging who you are and being, you know, being, being happy with that in your own skin. Absolutely. Well, I want to address something else attached to that. And, and the reason why I'm talking about, the reason why I'm bringing this up in terms of being guilt-free 
I think a lot of people are so afraid to be authentic and are, are so, like I said, sweeping things under the under the carpets or you know afraid of their skeletons or what have you. Here's the thing about that. You know what? Somewhere down the line, I don't care who you are, or how famous you are, skeletons do come out. And I'm not saying this barrier dirt out all for anyone to say or know or hear about. But you really, and you really do need to be authentic to the point that your clients need to know they can trust you. It's the trust factor is as equally as important that's built into the authentic authenticity factor. They're hand in hand, right? And that is what's going to get your clients and more clients and referral factor that's going to build into you getting more clients. The more authentic you are, the more trustworthy you are. Yeah. They're hand in hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. The no like and trust factor is huge in business. Absolutely huge. And that to me is a huge factor in being guilt free. Yeah. What are some other tidbits that you'd like to tie in in terms of giving people tips and tools on how to live a guilt-free life? Well, I'm really passionate about helping women savor what I call the three M's, um, money, marketing, and motherhood. And so we've talked a bit about motherhood, and um, I've enjoyed that piece of things. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, being guilt-free with money. I don't know if you're familiar with, but according to Working Mother, more than a third of working mothers feel guilty about their contribution to the family finances and the household. And so that can be a huge issue for a lot of women. And oftentimes that can be a mindset issue. Uh, it can be an issue of not making enough or not earning enough because they don't feel they're worthy, particularly if they're a business owner. So that's also part of the mindset. Or it could be masked as a marketing issue. They're not making what they need because they're not properly marketing their business in a way that they feel comfortable about. Very often when it comes to the marketing piece of things, you know, women feel guilty about what they think they have to do to market, you know, which is sometimes they feel like, oh, I've got to be um, predatorial or you know, I've got to be that used car salesman and really kind of attack or be aggressive towards people. But that as we were just talking a moment ago, being more authentic can really be very attractive. Um, but it's important that women learn how to talk about their business in a way that is attractive. I think as women, we're often you know, taught it's not polite to talk about yourself. You shouldn't toot your own horn. People are going to think you're stuck up or snooty or too good for yourself. But as business owners, we do have to talk about our business. We do have to talk about accomplishments of ourselves or our clients in order for people to really understand, here's who I serve, and this is the kind of result that they get. This is the problem that I solve, and I can help you too. And so it's important that uh, women be able to do those kinds of things to be successful in business. And that's a very valid point because as women, if we go back to older days, women are meant to be home and raise children and the men were basically the ones that were supposed to be there to support us. And now as we've gone on more and more to the culture, women are now, um, you know, we have a lot of single parents, women are now also getting married and having children and choosing to also work. And, and you're right, it has been a culture of women feeling less than or not worthy of earning. And if you look at statistics, men do earn more money than women. And so yes, it, it has definitely been a cultural problem. And women do need to start feeling worthy of making as much or and feeling worthy of. So yes, we definitely need to feel worthy of whatever it is, whatever it is specifically that we're earning, matching whatever it is that we're delivering. But that also goes to delivering a quality product and delivering value. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are delivering value, quality product, quality content, delivering quality, then yes, you are definitely worthy of getting quality pay. And Absolutely. So 
I, but I know? think a lot of service-based business owners, they're selling, and I work with a lot of them, chiropractors and accountants, and, and you know, there's the, what they're selling is the service that they themselves provide. And so there's often, and I hear this a lot from clients, they say things like, oh, if, if I could just provide the service and help people and not have to charge them, I'd be so much happier. Um, but they need to make a living too, and it's totally fine that they, that they do charge for their service. But they've got to get comfortable asking for the business and stating um, you know, what it is that, that they provide in a way that, that their potential client sees the value and is happy to pay them for that result or to solve the problem that they can help them with. I still go back to though, we as a culture have an unworthiness issue. You know, and I think and it goes back to again, having low self-esteem. So I, I, I don't think it's just a money issue. I think it's, it's a oh, cultural right. issue. So we, we still have to work on our, it, it's kind of funny, we, sometimes we just think it's a money issue. And, I, and this isn't just a woman issue, by the way. I really do think it's a cultural issue in ge general, male and female, that we as a culture have low self-esteem and low self-worth. And so we need to work on our inner selves and get up to speed on we are loved, we are worthy, we are appreciated. In other words, you know, our, like ourselves. We deserve, you know, in other words, we need to look in the mirror and go, yes, I am worthy, I am appreciated, I am loved, you know, and, and know that and really feel that on a core level. And there's been so many documentaries of when people actually look in the mirror and say to themselves, you know, you know, I am loved, I am worthy, I'm appreciated, how their bodies literally shake because they don't actually even really feel that. You know, Louise, Louise Hay work, and we won't get into all that, but it, it's, and it's amazing how, how much those types of things really make an impact into the money issue. Because if you don't think you're, you know, lovable, if you don't think you're appreciated, if you don't think you're, you're worthy, you certainly aren't going to feel comfortable asking for money from anybody. Right. Right, yeah. and you know, the whole self-esteem issue that you bring up, I, I see that a lot. And I notice with clients that have trouble saying no, that it's often there's some underlying, like you said, self-esteem issues or people-pleasing kind of tendencies where they feel like, gosh, I want to be liked, I, I don't want to say no. Could, could I share, I don't know if this would be of, uh, of interest to the listeners or not, but I have found a formula for three steps to guilt-free no's. I don't know if that would be something you think would be helpful to share. Absolutely. Okay, so the first thing that I teach my clients is that you want to give yourself the gift of time. Don't give, you know, if someone makes a request of you, don't give that automatic knee-jerk reaction, oh yeah, sure, no problem, I'll be happy to help you. <laughs> give yourself the gift of time, tell them. Um, I need to check my calendar. Let me talk to my husband. I need to pray about it. Let me sleep on it. Can I get back to you tomorrow? Whatever you need to say, give yourself at least 24 hours for requests. The second step is that you need to realize even when you say yes to something, there is a no in there. What are you actually still saying no to? Very often women feel like, I'll just say yes to everything so that I don't have to say no, but there's a no in there. Uh, you say yes to that promotion. Maybe you're saying no to being able to be at your son's sporting events you know, after work because of uh, extra meetings. Or if I say yes to staying up late and watching what's on the DVR, I'm saying no to being well rested in the morning and less crabby with my son. There's always a no in there. So be really conscious about what you're saying yes to and what is that really that hidden no. Sometimes we still say yes even though we know what the no is, but then at least you're being conscious about it. Then lastly, the third step is to give a yes a no or a counter offer. So it can be a flat out yes or even a conditional yes. Yes, I'd love to be on your show, uh, Carly, if we can record it at you know noon, my time. That's a conditional yes. Um, you can give a counter offer. Um, say yes to what feels right for you or what you can commit to. Uh, for example, I was asked to be on the board of my coaches association and it just didn't, the commitment didn't fit into my lifestyle where things were at with my son and what was going on in my business. So I couldn't say yes to that. But I did notice that they needed some help at the meetings with the food. Sounds like a small thing, but I felt like that was something I could say yes to. And I said, you know, would it be helpful if I took care of the food and brought it to the meetings and set it out and ordered it and, and did all of that? And they were very grateful. It was um, 
something that, that was very beneficial to the organization, and I felt good about it. It was something I could commit to, and they were thrilled. So that was a counter offer, and they accepted that. Or when you do need to say that no, sandwich it. So start with something positive, maybe affirm the relationship, the person, give your no, and then follow it up with a positive statement. Um, you know, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your show. No, I'm not able to do it on Thursday, um, but I sure hope that you know everything goes well with the other guests that you're having. Um, that's a nice way of saying no. I've had clients turn around and use it on me, and you know, I'm like, oh wow, that was so nice. Oh, they're still not. That's still a no. But it's kind of a nicer way to do it. Um, it's nicely received, and the other person. Also, you know, can feel good about what they're what they're saying, even though there's a no in there. Um, and notice there doesn't have to be any kind of excuse. You know, oh, thank you so much for the invitation to the party. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to make it. I know you're going to throw an awesome bash, and I hope you guys have a great time. I didn't give an excuse. I didn't say why I couldn't come, um, but I did give a no. So those are my three steps to go for no's. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And since this is a podcast, can you also please let everyone know? Um, your website and where they can find you. Absolutely. I've got lots of resources for women business owners, uh, helping them uh, grow their business and get their mindset right for success at centerforguiltfreesuccess.com. That's centerforguiltfreesuccess.com. And what are some final thoughts you'd like to leave with the audience? Because we've touched upon a lot of things. We've touched upon and ways for and I loved I love those tips for no's because that is a huge one. A lot of people, like you said, are absolutely terrified of giving no's. So those are great tips. We touched upon no's. We touched upon um, lots of different tips for living guilt free life. We talked about your M's. We've talked about so actually, why don't you just actually give some quick little, as I would say, uh, pithy summaries of some of those of the acronyms that you have. Absolutely. So I think it's really important for women to make the choices because it is a choice to live guilt free and it's probably one of the most important choices that we can make as women. It not only impacts us but it impacts our clients, our families, our community. Um, when, we're, when we do live guilt free it's much more enjoyable and we get to savor those three M's of money, marketing and motherhood. And I think that makes us a better human being and just better overall as women business owners. Okay. So as I'm very glad we got to redo our interview. We had some wonderful technical issues. So we, me and Victoria decided that we were going to redo this to give you a much more empowered, technology-free interview. So thank you so much for joining me again. This was so much better. <laughs> Thanks well, for hanging in there. <laughs> oh, wow. This was, this was a delight. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to many more conversations with you. With you. And um, as usual, everybody I put together a wonderful blog post with all of Victoria's information so you can find out all sorts of tidbits and all her links to everything. Um, you've been with your host, um, Carly Lissa Thorn. This has been Community Voices for Link Local Network. And I wish everyone a wonderful evening. I look forward to being with you next week. Have a great evening, everybody. Thanks for having me, Carly. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me, Victoria. <laughs>